endovascular thrombectomy um, has been an, an, an efficacious and safe um, uh, treatment for patients with large vessel occlusion in the anterior circulation, but for selected patients that uh, were randomized in multiple uh, clinical trials, uh, both in the early window that were concluded together in the Hermes meta-analysis and the late window beyond six hours and in Don and Diffuse 3. However, these trials um, did not largely enroll patients with uh, large core, patients with significant ischemic changes. Most of the patients that we had evidence on were patients with small cores, good aspects on the non-contrast CT head, and small cores on uh, perfusion images, um, and which result, resulted in underrepresentation of the large core population, which is an important population that account for about 20 to 25% as we saw in the phase two of the select uh, trial that we published uh, a few years ago. Um, so uh, those patients with low aspects on non-contrast CT had uh, large uh, core infarcts and perfusion images, with, whether it's CT perfusion or MRI uh, diffusion perfusion, uh, were underrepresented in the in the in the uh, uh, aforementioned trials. And and when you don't have randomized data, you you still uh, do, don't have certainty or you have uncertainty uh, when you are evaluating a patient's with a large vessel occlusion and large core in the emergency room, the risk benefit ratio is now well established. So some might say, well, there are large strokes already. The horse has left the barn, so to speak. There is no uh, benefit in intervening. There is high risk because opening the blood vessel uh, on, a, on a large ischemic area would um, uh, but plausibly or uh, uh, cause da damage and, and hemorrhagic transformation and cerebral edema. Um, on the other end, if you do not intervene, the natural history for these strokes, not good. They will continue to enlarge um, and the patient might end up with a very poor outcome, mortality, hemicraniectomy. So what we wanted to do is to address this paucity of randomized evidence. Um, in, a, in a randomized trial, and this was a continuation for the phase two trial, as I mentioned, in, in select um, by randomizing patients with large core on, on the different imaging modalities. The other important aspects in, in, into this is, well, how do you define large core? And when you are measuring ischemic changes, you can use different imaging modalities, non-contrast CT head, so Use, you may use uh, different imaging modalities, non-contrast CT head with the aspect score looking at the hypodensity of the tissue uh, or perfusion on CT looking at the blood uh, flow or volume and velocity and comparing it to normal vessel and the MRI diffusion perfusion and looking at uh, water molecules uh, diffusion restriction and cytotoxic edema and measuring the core infarct. Um, and and uh, when, when doing that, uh, the degree um, or, or the, the size of the ischemic changes might not uh, be the same on these different imaging modalities. And there might be concordance or discordance. So for all of these reasons, we wanted to look at um, endovascular thrombectomy safety and efficacy in large core, and we defined large core by the different imaging modalities. So we were, we would be potentially at the time of the trial design able to answer multiple questions of that regard. Uh, the trial uh, was a, um, a phase three uh, multi-center randomized controlled trial with blinded follow-up assessment uh, that uh, was conducted in uh, 31 centers in North America and the United States and Canada, in uh, Europe and Spain and Switzerland and in uh, Australia and uh, New Zealand. Um, and uh, the trial enrolled patients with large core. Those were the aspects of three to five core volume of more than 50 cc's on CT perfusion, amount diffusion, perfusion. All the patients received a, a unified imaging uh, protocol, baseline and contrast CT head followed by either CT perfusion or MRI diffusion perfusion dependent on the site of enrollment. 
and then where they were randomized into receiving thrombectomy or uh, medical management. Um, the trial planned initially for 560 patients enrollment with um, adaptive enrichment design and two pre-specified interim analyses at 200 and 380 um, and um, adaptive randomization to balance the baseline characteristics. The data and safety monitoring board who was uh, following the trial uh, closely um, requested a, a review of the 300, uh, requested a review of the first 300 enrolled patients' outcomes uh, after the results of uh, uh, risk you limit the Japanese trial that looked at large core based on MRI aspects. Um, and after reviewing these results, um, the, the data and safety management board recommended uh, permanently stopping the trial since the results showed that we crossed the pre-specified pre -specified boundaries that shows that thrombectomy um, was superior to uh, best medical management, including thrombolysis. At the time of stopping the trial, 352 patients were enrolled, uh, 178 went to thrombectomy, while 174 were allocated to medical management. Um, and the, the main result is there was a shift uh, towards better outcomes with uh, thrombectomy as compared to medical management. Um, and um, that shift translated to 60% uh, uh, probability of um, achieving better outcomes, at least one point improvement on the modified ranking scale of patients receiving thrombectomy as compared to medical management. And many look at the uh, odd ratios, so that translated to gen OR, uh, generalized odd ratios of one and a half uh, uh, higher odds of achieving at least one point improvement on the modified ranking scale in thrombectomy as compared to medical management, which was statistically significant. Um, and um, when you put things into easier way of communicating uh, or easier way of expressing the results, the number needed to treat was five. You treat five patients for thrombectomy for one patient to improve by at least one point in the modified ranking scale. Um, other important outcomes are those of the um, functional independence on RS of zero to two uh, and thrombectomy uh, improved those 20% as compared to 7% in medical management and a number needed to treat of uh, seven. Seven patients with uh, large core treats with thrombectomy for one patient to achieve functional independence and independent ambulation, uh, which is uh, walking independently in RS of zero to three at least uh, and uh, thrombectomy doubled those, almost 40% as compared to 20% in medical management, and a number needs to treat of five. And I want to highlight important um, points here that, you know, we are all used to the small core uh, patients where you are achieving functional independence in 50, 60% or even more, uh, while here we're dealing with the um, larger or sicker patients. Um, that you're not going to achieve 40, 50 percent anymore or more. Um, uh, so 20 percent functional independence is very good in this population. 40 percent ability to ambulate is, is excellent, especially when you compare it to medical management where those were much less. Uh, importantly, uh, the intervention was safe. Um, symptomatic hemorrhages actually were rare and select to just one patient in the thrombectomy group and two patients in medical management. So it was not higher with thrombectomy. And um, mortality in decreased with thrombectomy numerically, but it was not statistically stated. At least it was not increased. So the intervention was not necessarily uh, harming patients. Um, so very uh, satisfying results uh, that bring a lot of hope to uh, our patients and their families. A lot of questions that follows a, a major uh, trial results like this and um, uh, colleagues or uh, patients or anybody who's interested start 
wanting to look into the details. Uh, how large is large? Um, and and we we pre-specified an attempt and plan to look into um, the different core volumes and. Um, we had a good representation more than two-thirds of the patients were um, more than 70 uh, cc's uh, on perfusion images one-third of the patients uh, were more than 100 cc's and 15 percent of the patients were more than 150 so very very good representation and all of those from Bectum maintained its treatment effect there is no doubt that the likelihood of achieving functional independence will be lower and lower as the volume increases. The, the, the sicker patients, there's no question. However, the outcome with medical management was very poor. So at least you, you, you offer hope and opportunity uh, for uh, patients to improve. There is There are a lot of questions of which modality should I use? Uh, should I not need, uh, do I not need Perfusion anymore is is as is, is CT and aspects are sufficient since the, the the treatment was effective on both. I think the, the, a lot of these details uh, will have to wait for a lot of pre-planned sub analyses that will be forthcoming in in, 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 in in presentations and papers in the next um, a few months. Um, about how how what, what was the rate of hemicraniectomy? Um, what was the palliative care approach, what was the rehabilitation, all of those very, very important details, but they cannot be summarized in one paper. So we'll have to be a little bit patient, and uh, we, 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 we plan on um, publishing a lot on those and, and delving deeper into these analyses uh, to shed light into how, how should we approach uh, our patients and their families when, we, when it comes to this intervention. Uh, uh, how, how, how should we triage patients with imaging modalities? How should we do the follow-up care? All of those are very important and we plan on addressing them.